That's got it working temperature. Let's give it an oil change. Okay, good morning and welcome back. All right, Harley Davidson Dyna engine oil change. Now, it doesn't matter whether you've got a Sportster, a Softail, a Big Tourer, or a Dyna. All of them need a service every 5,000 miles, and the central pivotal task, the big daddy job in any service, is always the oil change. It's the first thing you must do. Now, if you're gonna do this yourself, if you're gonna learn your own motorcycle servicing, then the oil change is the number one job. It really is easy. It's the simplest task you'll carry out. Honestly, you drain the oil out, you put the bung back in, you change the filter, you top it up. That's it. There really isn't much more to it. The rest is just knowing the anatomy and all that's in here. I'll show you, show you exactly on there how easy these manuals are to follow. And honestly, the rest of it is just making sure you make a good job of your workshop practices so that you end up making a nice, safe oil change and you've then ticked off number one of your servicing regime. So there we are. Now I've warmed it up. Let's drain it out and get stuck in. Okay, first of all, before you even go anywhere near draining it out, take a look underneath your diner and you'll see underneath here, you've got this finned cover. This is your sump, if you like, and there are two drain plugs in it. There's one drain plug there, and there's another drain plug right there. So with two drain plugs, which is the one for the sump? So there it is in the manual, nice clear photograph. That's the transmission drain plug, and the one that's side mounted on the left hand side of the bike is the engine oil drain plug. So clearly that's the one today we need to take out. Okay, three quarter socket gets it. Now, because it's mounted on the side there, it is still the lowest point. If you look at the way the sump is configured, it slopes down towards the rear of the motorcycle and if you look at the sump shape, it's sloped this way very slightly. So when the bike's upright, that will still be the lowest point and it will still drain. All right, take the bung out first on the filler side, just to let air in as you drain the oil out. Right, that oil's pretty nasty as you saw. So while that has as much time as I can spare it to drain completely out, let's have a close look at the sump plug because it's got a magnet and that always helps us tell us what state the internals of the engine are in. It's as if there's any debris stuck to the magnet. Right, always pay to have a close inspection of your sump plug. Not just to see whether the magnet in the end has got any swarf or any filings on it. Nothing at all in this case, but also, very importantly, take the old O-ring off, which we're going to replace, and make sure that the threads on the sub plug are all immaculate. There's no cross threads on it, no burrs in there, nothing. And it's all nice and clean. That's lovely. That is a very healthy sub plug. Now it's finished draining, pretty much. Move the drain pan to the front. I'm going to put a cloth underneath the sump hole there. There'll be a few drips every now and again. Just let that finish draining in its own time. Now let's get the canister off. Right, canister type filter. Sits on the front of the engine. I'm going to use canister removing the wrench. Call it what you like. This is just a little cap with sides on it. And this particular one's a genuine Harley one. It's got a cutout in there because it fits on the Dyna engine on the front. It needs that little cutout just to fit in place of that. So once that's in there, we can pop extension bar in and then a ratchet. That means I can just unscrew it. Um, 
Okay, with your new filter, there's a couple of little jobs just that I like to do before I put them in. Now, one of them is to pre-prime the filter. Some say fill it up with oil before you put it in, but when you can do that, if you fill it up as you put it in, most of it will pour out because it's sideways mounted. But it doesn't hurt to pre-impregnate the internals, and that means just putting a little bit in there. So I just pour probably a good tablespoon or two of oil inside, like that and just roll all that round and it just wets the inside of the filter and gets plenty in there but not so much that when I mount it it's all going to pour out everywhere just a bit of common sense really and that means that when it first fires up the filter isn't bone dry there it is visually if you look down inside it's about half full you can see it about halfway up just roll that round inside and when you hold it sideways on nothing's coming out that's about right it gets to that point where it starts to spill there then that's enough to put in. The second thing is to oil round the rubber seal. Not just this edge here that you can see, but actually take it out. Get your fingers, remove that rubber seal, get some oil around the track inside that the rubber seal sits in. Otherwise, you're wet on the outside, but the other side of the seal is dry. And there's a very important reason for that. Let's pop a little bit of oil in that track. Roll that round. Now I've said this many times with rubber seals and rubber gaskets, and that is to make sure that if possible, wherever possible, they slide against a lubricated surface. And that means they'll slide into their natural default position. There'll be no drag. A dry rubber seal against a dry metal face, it drags and it gives you a false reading on how you're doing it up. And there is a very specific twist, torque or a number of turns to get this done up correctly and not to over tighten it either because when they're over tightened you just make a nightmare for yourself when it comes to taking them off and potentially dangerous because you can damage things if you over tighten them. So that's it, she's halfway impregnated, there's plenty of oil in there and it's wet on both sides of the seal. There we go, that's it, let's pop it on. Check around the face that that rubber seal is going to sit against, make sure there's no crud or road debris on there that's going to interrupt the seal. Nice and smooth and oily. And then we can install the new oil filter. Straight on there and spin it up. Now, as for tightening these, there is a specific tightening procedure. Get it to the point where the seal touches. Once that mates against there and the rubber seal, so come on out, spin in. Once that rubber seal touches the mating face, So from there, half a turn, three quarters of a turn. That's it, no more needed. Right, okay, a common mistake that we often see made is people will over tighten an oil filter for no reason at all. They will seal with what the manual prescribes very clearly is a half to three quarters of a turn from the point that the rubber touches. So screw it in, rubber touches the metal face, give it another half or three quarters of a turn if you must, and that's tight enough. It will seal at that point, it absolutely will. If it doesn't, or you find that somehow it does weep, you can still give it another quarter turn. But you keep turning that in, it will go, you get it all the way in until it jams solid, and you try and get that off in the future, you'll realise why you shouldn't have done it. So there we are, done over tighten it, half to three quarters of a turn, as stated in the manual. Right, let's put the bung back in, let's fill it up. Okay, new rubber o-ring. There we go. Job done. Okay, equally as important with the sump plug not to over tighten it, same as the filter. You'll get a world of hurt later on if you strip the thread on the sump. The sump is aluminium, that's the problem. The plug itself is okay, it's steel. But if you damage that thread in the sump, then you've got to repair it later on. It's just another grief you don't need. So don't over tighten in the first place. Book says 14 to 21 foot pounds. That's a wide range it gives you. All Harley Torque settings are a range. They don't just give you a specific setting. So you've got lots of scope to get it right. Make sure you do it up with the torque wrench. And also in this case, I use a little bit of Hylomar as well. Hylomar is a non-drying sealant. It stays sticky all the time. And make sure when you use Hylomar sealants on your sump plug, put it on the plug.
Don't put it in the sump hole and think that's okay because when you put the plug in, the plug will push that sealant into the engine and it will leave it in there. It won't actually go around the thread. The only way to guarantee that that sealant goes nicely around the thread is to put it on the thread. Then as you roll it in, you'll get a residue squish out round that bolt head, just wipe it away and you'll guarantee that none of this is floating around in your engine and you don't want that because this stuff doesn't dry. It stays sticky and snotty and it stays that way forever. It will float around in your oil and eventually it will find a little tiny place it can't get through and it will bung it up and you'll get oil starvation. So don't put too much Hylomar on anything. Always very sparingly, put it on the thread and make sure that the most of it comes out, not goes in. I think we've said all that loads of times. Anyway, plugs in, let's top it up. Right, so what oil to use for your bike? Now, it's a big old debate and I don't want to give any advice on it, save to say that the manual recommends HD 360. Harley Davidson 360 oil is perfectly adequate for your diner and it will do the job. But personally, I built this bike to ride and we'll put it through some pretty hard punishing miles, so I'm going to upgrade the oil to a Screaming Eagle Sin 3 fully synthetic 2050. That's the correct spec for this engine that exceeds all of the specifications that this engine needs. And as I intend to ride it pretty hard, why not spoil it with the oil? It is the lifeblood after all. It is expensive, but it only takes two and a half liters. So why not? Okay, and one more pint. That's it. Excellent, right, no leaks, but I can't check the level while it's upright on the lift. I've got to get off onto the floor, lean it over to the side stand, then I can check the level. And there is a hot level check and a cold level check. I'll show you do that. Right, okay, now, checking the engine oil level on your Harley. I think we all know this one, don't we? It's got to be on the side stand with the engine hot. It says that on the dipstick, it says it in the manual, it even says it on the little stickers on some of the new Harleys now. So make sure it's on the jiffy stand and nice and working temperature. But I've got to check it now before I go out on a ride to get it hot and then check it. And I want to make sure I've got enough oil in it. So there is also a cold level check. It's quite straightforward, it's marked in the manual. If you look at your stick itself, it's got Two bits of information. First of all, do not overfill. Go a big warning on the dipsticks, very important. Secondly, here, you've got this pointed area. That's the area of measurement. That's your, your range that you can have the oil within, preferably at the full level, no less than the half. And then if it's off the bottom of the stick, you really need to put some oil in it because it's running too low and you're going to be suffering engine wear. Now it's very important to make sure that you check your engine hot, as it says, because that's when everything expands and it comes up to the correct level. One of the things we don't do enough of is getting in the habit of checking our oil when we come home from a ride. When you get back to the house from a ride, you're ready to put your bike away, it's at working temperature. What a great opportunity. Yank the stick out, have a little gander, see what it's like. Obviously we forget that most of the time. So then how do we know if we've forgotten if the next time you go out you just want to check it? Because aren't we more likely to want to know if we've got enough oil and check our levels and our tyre pressures and everything when we go out on a ride? and that's when the engine's cold. So you can check it cold. I just want to show you this. It's something that's very reliable and it will give you a little bit of peace of mind. Where it says on there, full hot on the top, that's at the top there. If it's cold, it should be in the middle of the stick. Some Sportsters have full cold, full hot. So they give you the two options, but not on this one. So if you don't see that on your stick, it's not the end of the world. That area there, that range of measurement, if it's in the center of that when the engine's cold, that's the correct level and then just double check it when you get it hot to make sure it comes right up. Easy, isn't it? So let's check if I've got it to the right level. It's cold and it should be in the middle of that little range area. Let's have a look. Drop the stick in downwards, not across this way or anything, it won't go. Drop the stick straight down and then turn the bung, push it all the way in. Always check the oil level by pushing the bung all the way home. Some bikes, I'm sure you know, I'm sure you've seen this, you push the stick in and you set them to there for the level. That's not the case with this engine. You must take the stick, push it all the way home like that. Then when we come out, lift it up. And there we have 
halfway up the stick or the measured area. So I know I've got it right at the moment, but I still will check that when it's hot after taking it for a little ride, which is what I've got to look forward to now. So there we are, one oil change. I hope that helps you a lot. I hope you're gonna do yours yourself. If you've got any questions, drop in the comments underneath. Thank you for watching, take it easy, ride safe. That was an oil change, I'll see you next time.